<laughs> no thanks, I have to watch my weight. Uh, I'm making a study of it. Bah! Those are just common, ordinary bellis perennis. I have no interest in those flowers of yours. Hmm, that's interesting. Looks like something I dug up from a garden once. <laughs> it died. Oh, I cannot accept payment for my scientific services. They are performed solely to increase knowledge and to benefit mankind. It, besides, taking money might jeopardize my government grants. Hands off, dear! I am saving my body for science. Come back and visit again! Oh, and if you see Igor, please tell him... You offer the old man some candy, hoping that will cheer him up. He doesn't seem at all interested. Flowers? Why, yes. Anna loves flowers. She... she picks some every day for our house. Pretty flowers. Look nice and grave. <laughs> Igor like candy. You're nice to Igor. No thanks. Igor allergic to avocado, huh? For me? Why, no one has brought me flowers since Boris and I were courting. Thanks. <laughs> Say, you aren't sweet on me, are you? Nay, no thanks. I've got plenty here. Oh my, what strong hands you have. Let me feel your muscles. <laughs> On second thought, you realize you really don't want to do much touching of this woman, nor vice versa. You were told that you shouldn't use magic in Mordavia. Someone might see you here. You were told... Since you're far too sophisticated a spellcaster to do something mundane like walking over to a cornstalk and picking an ear, you try the fetch spell instead. Unfortunately, fetch doesn't work very well on things that are attached together. It seems you'll have to pick your own corn the boring, old-fashioned way after all. This is the wrong kind of corn for making popcorn. Thank you. These remind me of the ones my wife used to make. Thank you. I used to gather flowers for... Oh, that was too many years ago to think about. The gate seems to be magically enchanted. It's too much effort to bother the bush. Would you believe you're bushed? The bush is sitting there quietly, fondly remembering times gone by as it turns over another leaf in its memory book. Hmm. Nothing. A soft, magical aura permeates the entire garden. Strong magic emanates from the fruit tree and the center of the pool in the stream. 
The lanterns are also magical. Your magical lasso floats towards the tree and plucks a single ripe fruit from its branches. You feel a surge of power as the magical energy from the fruit releases itself into your system. A magical fountain has sprung up from the water. At the top is a huge tulip its flower tightly closed. Your spell has opened the tulip. Resting within the flower is a scroll. You capture the scroll with your fetch spell. As you read the scroll, Knowledge of how to cast a protection spell enters your mind, then the scroll vanishes. Protection is a sort of magical shield which will help guard you from physical attacks. You sense magic radiating from the staff and protecting this area. Powerful and hostile magic radiates from the shadowed doorway and the relief of the six-tentacled monster above it. You sense a low level of magic all around you, as if many arcane and unpleasant activities had occurred here in the past. The hexapodal wall decoration above the fireplace is actually an enchanted creature and extremely powerful magic radiates from an object in the display case. This place practically vibrates with dark magic. You get a momentary vision of nameless rites and unspeakable rituals before the spell cuts off. Any individual magical impressions are lost among the overall dark magical aura. These bizarre creatures are only stone carvings, you hope. A number of barrels stacked and strewn about show that this room was used for storage as well as unspeakable acts. You cast the protection spell. It gives you a warm, safe feeling. The book seems to be resisting your spell. You sense it calling to you to come closer and open it. <laughs> 